Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about Klein rules. I'm gonna give you a completely custom Klein rule that was made by the lead developer of Klein, just for us, which is basically a Next.js Stripe plus Superbase set of Klein rules. Now what this actually allows us to do is it allows us to code without errors for the first time properly, and this is even better than Context 7. Let's get into it. Now, just before we get into this, huge shout out to the school community. You guys are really keeping me going. There's some really, really good stuff in here. There's stuff that allows you to jump into coding without any, having any coding experience whatsoever. Or if you want a little bit more of a high code example, then there's also a huge course here with actual code and Visual Studio Code, etc. If you want to join the school, there'll be the first link in the description of this video. Okay, so this is the Klein rule. If you don't know how Klein rules work, basically, I'll leave a link to them in the description of this video. All you have to do is make a new workspace on Visual Studio Code, right? So let's just do this completely from scratch. So we'll do open folder here. We'll do a brand new folder. We'll call it ZZZZ, ZZZZ, there we go. Select the folder, right? And then we add a new file and we call it, I believe it's dot client rules. Right, and then we paste the client rules. Again, I'll leave a link to the client rules in the description of this video. These are client rules for Superbase plus OAuth plus Next.js plus Stripe, right? And it's the first time that I've managed to code these things without issues. So there's a couple of things that you need for this to work. First of all, you need an OAuth client, right? So create a new OAuth client. You need to ensure that um, you have added whatever email you want to test this with to the test users. This is very, very important. And then also within the um, within your super base, you need to go to authentication here, sign in providers, right? You need to make sure Google is turned on. You need to put your client ID, which is here, here, and your client secret, which is here, here. And then you need to get this callback URL, okay? So effectively what's happening is it's Superbase is using your Google setup, right? You also need to set these things here. These are the redirect URLs. The most important one is this one here, right? Which is actually found, if I go back to Google here, this should be if I copy this and then do control F and then search for it. You need to make sure this is in, in authorized redirect URIs. Also localhost here and also um, your Superbase URI right here. These are all vital steps to this process, right? And then the only other thing you need is you need a sandbox Stripe account, right? So this is a sandbox. You can go to switch sandbox, create sandbox, create a new sandbox, create a new product, right? And you also need to set up redirects here. So go to developers, webhooks, create a new webhook, Make sure you've got your publishable key and your secret key, right? These are just test uh, variables. And then that's pretty much everything that we need for this to actually work. Okay, so from there, basically all we need to do is feed this prompt here, which has my .m variables and it has access to the client rules because they're inside this directory, right? So we can press enter here. This just basically has my next, uh, my um, superbase.env and my stripe.env. So you can see here, it's now added this .m file here with just these variables, if you can see. And now it's going to create everything else. The only thing I have turned, the only other thing I have turned on is my Superbase MCP. The reason for that is because I just want it to do everything for me. I don't want to have to worry about running SQL, etc. And also I have my bright data MCP right here turned on just in case it needs to look anything up if there's an error or whatever. I tend to use this over context seven just because um, it it just works a bit more integrated, to be honest with you, or brave and fetch. I just like to have the bright data MCP turned on just in case. Okay, so you can see here it's now using the Superbase MCP just to make sure that it actually has um, everything. So this already exists, that's fine. Um, it's already, the, the Superbase um, thing is already so now it's running it, that's fine. It's running it with, um, it's running it with more um, destructive 
SQL, so it basically destroys any SQL that currently exists, basically. So it's now deleted my database. And now it's going to recreate the database, hopefully. Um, I'm pretty sure that it just destroy everything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. So yeah, this is super, super cool. Look, look at this. This is what makes this so good is it tried to code once here. There was a mistake where it said it didn't say dot basil on the end of it. Like obviously Gemini didn't have any idea about that. And it found it and fixed it, right? Using the using the client rules, right? Which is the super, super cool thing about this. Okay, so I just deleted the user from my previous testing. So now if I refresh this, there's no users here right now. Okay, and then there's this subscription manager.tsx and it has a um, placeholder here, your price Stripe ID. So we'll grab this pri the Stripe price ID from Stripe and we'll just paste that here. Oops, just paste that here. There we go, and then save it. Okay, so it now says it's done. The beautiful thing about this, right, is that if you can get, it, it, this is like a boilerplate, right? You can now take this, run with this, build whatever you want. You don't actually ever have to build another one. You can use this as a starting point. You can put it on GitHub, whatever, or you can just run through this every single time at the beginning, right? So let's test this out. Remember, just, just think about all the times that you've tried to do this in the past. Think about how many errors there were, et cetera, et cetera. And then let's see if there are any errors here. Okay, so there, there, there's an error here. That's fine. Um, let's go to login with Google. I'm on the wrong. Um, I can't log in there. I need to log in on Income Stream Surfer. Okay, I'm already logged in, so let's sign out here. So login with Google. Okay. Let's see if the OAuth works. It does. And then subscribe now. Button doesn't work. Okay, so I press subscribe now. Let's see. It's loading. Beautiful. Look at that. They, they, someone thought that I was giving away my car details. If you don't know, these are Stripe um, practice details. They, they're like fake, not fake, but, you know, whatever details. Uh, test details. The 4242-4242 is not a real card. Someone was like, oh my God, did you just give us all your card details? Last time I did this. Okay, so that has worked. Okay, that, that worked, but it, it went um, to a 404, right? So we'll just say, please make sure to properly redirect to the dashboard after a successful purchase. And we'll send it this. This happens every time. Let's just go to Superbase here and we'll click on, uh, I think it's table editor, user subscriptions. Look at that. We now have a user subscription. 2142, that's not right. Oh, okay. It's an hour behind. Um, yeah, this is correct. Perfect. So this was made now, right? This is a brand. You saw me delete it before. Actually, I remember now. So yeah, I mean, this is the first time I've been able to do this with basically zero errors. This client rules thing is changing the game when it comes to um, AI coding. I actually, honestly, I cannot recommend this enough, guys. Definitely check this out. Check out the Bright Data MCP as well, guys. There's something there for sure as well. Uh, this is going to basically just um, quickly do this again. So now that this is done, if I, there we go. Payment successful. Thank you for your subscription. You'll be re redirected to your dashboard shortly. Go to your dashboard now. I am now logged in. I have a Stripe um, subscription, right? And I exist in the database. If you don't know, I'm pretty sure I don't, I'm not hundred percent sure. Maybe you need the Stripe subscription ID. I'm pretty sure Stripe customer ID is enough now to, you know, they, the system will now know if you're logged into a paid account, which means you can start building the rest of the SaaS, right? I'm going to leave the video there, guys. This is super exciting times. I'll leave a link to the client rules that I used in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute bloody legend and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.